we uh, we are supposed to uh, discuss the paper number 7 right it's a first question a uh, find real values of x satisfying the inequality x squared minus 1 greater than or equal to mod x plus 1 hmm? right now uh, number 1 x squared minus 1 greater than or equal to mod x plus 1. First, we'll define the mod x plus 1. Mod x plus 1 changes at x minus 1. Then, uh, when x takes minus 1 or more, then mod x plus 1 we will be equal to x plus 1. On the left of minus 1, mod x plus 1 will be equal to minus x minus 1. Then this question we solve in the two intervals uh, when x less than minus 1. When x less than minus 1, when I write this one, x squared minus 1 greater than or equal to mod x plus 1. In the interval x less than minus 1, mod x plus 1 takes this, minus x minus 1. I will take to this side. Meantime, we'll factorize this. X minus one. X plus one. Take this right hand side plus X plus one coming. No. Greater than now zero. Reason? Uh, this I can write as X minus one. X plus one. Factorizing this considering as difference of two squares. And uh, now. Here, this minus sign taking out, we get the thin bracket x plus 1. Once we take that this side, that will be plus times x plus 1. So now I can take x plus 1 out. Then here we get x minus 1. Here we have plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. This two you can cancel down. Then we get x times x plus 1 greater than equal to 0. So, now we can find the range of this, right? Uh, equate this 0, x is 0. Equate this to 0, we get x minus 1. Here we have equal sign, then both we have to select, both we have to take. Now, we will substitute a uh, value for x selecting in this range, like suppose 2 we put here, what do we get this? Here 2, this is 3. 2 into 3 is 6, 6 greater than 0 is true. So, therefore, this interval we have to select. Then you know the middle interval won't come. This interval we get. Then we get x less than no equal to minus 1. Here, this we have taken this minus 1, no? x less than no equal to minus 1. But really, we consider in the interval x less than minus 1. So, then this says x is only less than minus 1. This answer says x is less than minus 1 no equal to minus 1. Then for this and this common re region is x less than minus 1, right? So therefore, first answer is therefore x less than minus 1 is the first answer. People secondly, we solve the same question in the interval x greater than or equal to minus 1. In that interval we discussed, we solve this question. Now, we will write that inequality in that interval x squared minus 1 greater than or equal to, uh, when x greater than or equal to minus 1, what the x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1, this will be x plus 1, right. So, here you can factorize x minus 1, x plus 1, take this this side, minus x plus 1, right? Now, once we take this, this side, we have on the right hand side 0. Now, take x plus 1 out. Then, what do you get here, people? We have x minus 1, right? Here. And once we take this out, x minus 1, here, minus 1. Greater than or equal to 0, we get. Huh? Then, there we get x plus 1 into x minus 2 greater than or equal to 0. Now, how to find the range for this? Equate this to 0, 
x2 equal to 0 x minus 1 since here we have equal sign both these values we select okay now uh, we substitute here the value for x taking from any region we like i take uh, 0 here 0 is in this interval now when i put 0 here this bracket is 1 when i put 0 here this bracket is minus 2 1 into minus 2 left hand side we get minus 2 that is greater 0 or equal to 0 means wrong so therefore we do not accept this okay then uh, we have to select this region and this region okay now we solve this question in this interval right answer we got this then we have take the common region for this and this common region for this and this going to be uh, for this region n x equal minus 1 common region going to be x equals minus 1 right now really if i mark this uh, region people what region this region x greater than or equal to minus 1 i am going to mark like this here then see uh, since this include x equals minus 1 we have to take minus 1 then this minus 1 belongs to this black region and black region means the region which satisfies this inequality now i am going to now mark with this red color the region x greater than or equal to minus 1 see here if i color it like this you can see ah, now you can see for the black region and this red region the common region right people what is the common region there we get ah, this minus 1 is common x equals minus 1 and here x greater than or equal to 2 this is a number 2 right so then final answer how do we obtain people this number 1 union number 2 1 union 2 that's how we take the final answer number 1 says x less than minus 1 number 2 says that minus 1 we include then number 1 x less than minus 1 to that when we put x equals minus 1 this will be x less than or equal to minus 1 and what x greater than or equal to 2 that is how we take final answer right so therefore required region is 1 union 2 this union this and then what do you get to this we have to include this x less than no equal to minus 1 hmm? and x greater than or equal to 2 this is the solution right this is the solution right question number 2 limit question Uh, we are given alpha less than pi by 2 greater than 0 limit x going to a limit x going to a x cube minus a cube x cube minus right here people uh, x going to alpha no not a really sorry limit x going to alpha x going to alpha x cube minus alpha cube divided by tan x minus tan alpha ah, we need to find the limits of this yes how to take this i can write this x cube minus alpha cube hmm, like this by factorizing this 
considering this as difference of two cubes. What are the factors? X minus alpha, X squared plus alpha X plus alpha squared. I factorize this, huh? right? So then, uh, this denominator, then I can write sine by cos, right? Sine by cos. So then we get sine x by cos x minus sine alpha divided by cos alpha. At the limits here. X going to alpha. Right. Now what I do next is here we take common derivative as the cos six cos alpha product. Cos six cos alpha product we take. Then cos alpha comes here, cos six comes here, right? Then I can write next one limit x going to alpha, right? Ah, uh, limit x going to alpha. x minus alpha x squared plus alpha alpha squared here cos 6 cos alpha product I can take as the common denominator then cos alpha comes here cos 6 comes here sin x into cos alpha minus cos 6 into sin alpha. This see we get. Huh? Then you know here we have sin a cos b minus cos c sin b form. It is sin a minus b, sin a minus b, right. And then I can write it like this now. Uh, you can write equals limit x going to alpha, right. I write first people x minus alpha here and x squared plus alpha x plus alpha squared. Hmm? Here sin x minus alpha divided by cos 6 into cos alpha. This is what we get now. Right now, you can understand that. Now, what I do is this people. I can bring this x minus alpha where here. I can bring this where here. And we apply limit for the rest. Limit x going to alpha, this one I write, okay. Then uh, secondly, once I bring this way here, sin x minus alpha divided by x minus alpha, here limit x going to alpha and here limit x going to alpha this x squared plus alpha x plus alpha squared right <coughs> you can see here x going to alpha means when you take this alpha to this side x minus alpha when you take this alpha to this side x minus alpha x minus alpha going to 0 if you assume this x minus alpha as theta now this takes sin theta divided by theta here theta going to 0 then this is 1 Okay, uh, here here we must uh, write uh, people this no cos six cos alpha part no right. Ah, uh, that is uh, that one we have written here no? cos six cos alpha no. Cos six cos alpha we have to write that huh? Okay, now put uh, alpha here here here, and here put alpha. We want to get alpha squared. When you put alpha here, alpha 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 squared. 
3 alpha squared, then 3 alpha squared. Here, when I put alpha, cos alpha, cos alpha, cos squared alpha, right? This is the answer. 3 alpha squared, cos squared alpha, correct, no? Right. This is how we take that, huh? Number next, the curves is given typically by x equals 3 cos theta y equals 3 sin theta minus sin cube theta theta between 0 and 90. Show that dy by dx is minus cot cube theta. Hmm? Number 3. x equals 3 cos theta minus cos cube theta y 3 sin theta minus sin cube theta no this way x equals 3 cos theta minus cos cube theta y equals 3 sin theta minus sin cube theta we are given this theta less than pi by 2 greater than 0. Ask and show dy by dx. Ah, right. So, then we will differentiate this with respect to theta. dx by d theta. What is that? Cos theta derivative is minus sin theta, no? Minus 3 sin theta. How differentiate cos cube theta? We have to start from here. 3 into cos squared theta. This cos theta derivative is minus sin theta, that minus sin this is plus sin theta. Secondly, we will differentiate that y with respect to theta, dy by d theta, 3, our derivative of sin theta is cos theta, sin cube theta, let us bring this 3 before, 3, sin squared theta, the derivative of sin theta, it is cos theta, correct, no? Now, by chain rule, we can write dy by dx is equal to dy by d theta, into d theta by dx, dy by d theta is this, put that here. 3 cos theta minus 3 sin squared theta cos theta multiplied by d theta by dx. d theta by dx means people reciprocal of this 1 over hmm, minus 3 sin theta plus 3 cos squared theta sin theta. No? Mm, right. Then, uh, people, uh, you can take this 3, you can cancel down with this 3. Mm? Then, we have dy by dx. Mm? Here, from this uh, numerator, take cos theta out. Then, we get 1 minus sin square theta. And the denominator people you can take minus sin theta. Minus sin theta. Huh? Then here 1, this is now minus cos square theta. Right. dy by dx. Here 1 minus sin square theta is, this is cos square theta. That cos square theta into this cos theta is cos cube theta. Here, 1 minus cos square theta means sin square theta. Sin square theta into sin theta is sin cube theta. 
minus sin cube theta. Cos cube theta divided by sin cube theta is cot cube theta. No. Therefore, we can write dy by dx is equal to minus cot cube theta minus cot cube theta. Next one asking find the coordinates of the point P on the curve C at which the gradient of the tangent line is minus 1. Gradient of the tangent line is given by dy by dx. This dy by dx, geometrical meaning of dy by dx people, gradient. Now, we need this gradient to be minus 1. That means, dy by dx should be equal to minus 1. No? Right. dy by dx minus 1. Because dy by dx is the gradient. Gradient function is dy by dx. But dy by dx is minus cot cube theta. Put that there. Minus 1 minus signs you can cancel down. Cot cube theta 1. Cot cube theta 1 means cot theta is 1. Cot theta is 1. Cot theta means 1 over tan theta. 1 over tan theta 1 means tan theta 1. Okay? Tan theta 1. Tan theta equal to 1. That means theta 5 by 4 because theta lies between 0 and 90, no? Theta 5 by 4. Ah. Then we know the theta value is 5 by 4. Now, asking to find the coordinates. Hmm? Asking to find the coordinates of the point P. That means that theta we have to put here, here, here and here to find x and y coordinates of the point P. Ah. Then we can write point P like this. Therefore, x I can write, x coordinate of the point P, put for this theta pi by 4, 3 cos pi by 4 minus cos pi by 4 to the power 3 is the meaning of cos cube theta, x cos pi by 4 means 1 over root 2, p over root 2 here, 1 over root 2, to the power 3, 3 over root 2 minus 1 over 2 root 2, correct no, root 2 to the power 3 means 2 root 2, hmm? root 2 root 2 root 2 no, 2 root 2, then we get common dividends here, 2 root 2, this will be 6 minus 1 is 5, x is this, similarly y can be found. Uh, same way people you can see here cos pi by 4 and sin pi by 4 the same no sin 45 1 over root 2 cos 45 1 over root 2 so therefore when you substitute 45 here and here the same answer we got for this x we must get so therefore that i write as like this therefore point p we get pi over 2 root 2 pi over 2 root 2. Both x and y coordinates at that point are equal. Each pi over 2 root 2. Right. That's how we take that one. Huh? Right. Next one, question number 4. Question number 4. Yes, uh, L1 and L2 be the straight lines given by 3x minus 4y equals 2. 3x minus 4y equals 2, right? 
equation number 4, 3x minus 4y equal to, I take that 2 to left hand side, then minus 2 equals 0, first line L1. L2 line, 4x minus 3y, take that right hand side 1 to left hand side, minus 1 equals 0. Write down the equations of the bisectors of the angles between L1 and L2, right. You know people that the equation how to obtain this way, no? Suppose this is our L1 line, 3x minus 4y minus 2 equals 0. This one, 4x minus 3y minus 1 equals 0. Right, no? Then you know the two bisectors coming uh, like this. One is this, other one is this. Right? The equations we know how to find people. This equation 4x minus 3y minus 1 divided by square root of x coefficient squared plus y coefficient squared equals plus so minus, same thing we write for the other, 3x minus 4y minus 2 divided by square root x coefficient squared plus y coefficient squared we write. This 2 are equal, no people here, 25, no, 5, this also 25, 5, then these two you can cancel down. Then uh, taking plus sign, we get one equation of these two bisectors, by minus sign we get the other equation, understood, right. Plus sign gives us what people, hmm? 4x minus 3y minus 1 equals 3x minus 4y minus 2. Take this to the side, we get x. 4y, right, then y, here plus 1. First equation is this. Right. Take minus sign. When you take minus sign, we get the next uh, people equation. Right. Take minus sign. Minus sign when you take 4x minus 3y minus 1 is equal to minus 3x minus 4y minus 2, right? Take this side 7x. 4y, take this side, right, minus 7y. Here 2, take this side, minus 3. 0. They are the two equations of the bisectors. Okay. Now, uh, find the equation of the bisector of the acute angle between the lines. Ah, right. There, what we do is this. People, you know, to uh, separate out of these two, what is the acute angle bisector. For this, what we do, uh, of the two lines given, we take any line, okay, all right, now what I do, now consider, hmm? yeah, I will take uh, people this line, 4x minus 3y minus 1 equals 0, and I take one equation of the two bisectors, just now we found, this and this, no, any one of that two you can take, I take this, x plus y plus 1 equals 0, right, now, we take the gradient of these two lines, right, and then we write this, tan theta is modulus, 
m1 minus m2 1 plus m1 m2 right now we take the gradient of this first hmm? suppose that is m1 to find the gradient what we need to do is bring this 3 by to right hand side and subject y dividing by 3 then what do you get 4 by 3 come in as the x coefficient gradient is 4 by 3 here bring these two terms right hand on the right hand the x coefficient going to be minus 1 therefore the gradient is minus 1 correct no now if you take this m1 m2 other way around also correct people never mind now what we do this m1 m2 we substitute here and simplify and we get this tan theta for this tan theta if its answer is less than 1 then what is the decision the selected bisector is the acute angle bisector between the two lines okay if this tan theta answer is more than 1, the selected bisector is the obtuse angle bisector between the two lines. Understood? Right. So, then let us see what you get. Tan theta is equal to, all right, m1, 4 by 3, m2, minus 1, 1 plus m1, 4 by 3, m2 minus 1 like this. We will simplify this. Right. What do you get here? 7 by 3. Here, 3 minus 4. 3 minus 4 minus 1 by 3. This and this you can cancel down. Tan theta modulus minus 7. Tan theta is 7. Modulus of minus 7 is 7 people. Huh? Then we get for tan theta a value more than 1. That means this bisector is the obtuse angle bisector between the two lines given. Then other bisector, this one, should be the acute angle bisector. Then you have tried inverts, therefore acute angle bisector is this. This should be this should be obtuse angle. Therefore, acute angle bisector is not this one. This is obtuse angle bisector. This 7x minus 7y minus 3 equals 0. This is how we take that. Question number 5 next. Question of five. Show that cos theta by two plus sine theta by two perfect square d is equal to one plus sine theta. One plus sine theta, right? I will square this using a plus b squared. What is that? cos square theta by 2 for the middle term 2 times this multiplied by this sin theta by 2 into cos theta by 2 square of this sin squared theta by 2 this and this when you take together we get what cos square theta by 2 plus sin square theta by 2 it is 1 
this one to sin theta by 2 into cos theta by 2 means sin theta. Correct, no? Sin theta when we write half angles, in half angles, it is 2 sin theta by 2 into cos theta by 2. Correct, no? Right. This one now. 1 plus sin theta we get. Hmm? Cos theta by 2 plus sin theta by 2 perfect square. This is the first chance we can show. Let us ask in next. Hence, show that cos pi by 12 plus sin pi by 12. Right. Pi by 12. Pi by 6 is 30 degrees. Then pi by 12 means 15 degrees. 15 degrees. Right, no? Right. Now, I will substitute put theta equals pi by 6. Where? Here. See what do you get? Pi by 6 by 2. Pi by 12. Here, pi by 6 by 2. Pi by 12. Perfect square. Hmm? 1 plus sin pi by 6. We substitute for theta pi by 6. No? Sin 30 half. Hmm? Sin 30 is half. Then here we get 1 plus half 3 by 2. Left hand side we have perfect square of this 3 by 2. Understood? Hmm? Now I can write next line like this. I can take the square root on the right hand side. Then we get cos pi by 12 plus sin pi by 12 is equal to plus or minus square root of 3 by 2. People, you know, pi by 12 is 15, no? Cos 15. 15 is in the first quadrant. Sin 15, also in the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, both sin and cos positive. Therefore, this is positive, this is positive. Their sum should be positive. Then right hand side, we select what? The plus sign. Okay? Right. This gives us cos pi by 12 plus sin pi by 12 should be equal to root 3 by 2. Reason, hmm? cos pi by 12 positive sin pi by 12 positive. Therefore, their sum should be positive. Right. Secondly, people asking to show also find the value of cos pi by 12 minus sin pi by 12. Now, what we put is this people. Put theta equals minus pi by 6. Where? Here. Okay. Right. We put in this theta equals minus pi by 6. Then what do you get? Cos minus pi by 12 plus sin minus pi by 12. Perfect squared. 1 plus sin minus pi by 6. Right. You know, cos negative angle. We know we can ignore this minus sign because if the ratio is cos, we can ignore that. Therefore, it is cos pi by what people? Cos pi by right? 12. Cos pi by 12. And this minus sign you can take out because sign. Right? From sign and tan, if they contain minus sign with the angle, you can take them out. Right? Minus sin 5 by 12. It's perfect square. Here this minus sign also we can take out. Then 1 minus sin 5 by 6 is half. Sin 30, no? Sin 30 is half. Then once we simplify this, we get half. Here we have a perfect square. Hmm? 
now here also we take square root we take square root sin pi by 12 oh cos pi by 12 i got here cos pi by 12 no it's a mistake cos pi by 12 cos pi by 12 right minus sin pi by 12 cos pi by 12 hmm minus sin pi by 12 should be plus or minus 1 over root 2 when you take the square root Understood, right? Okay. Now, what sign we have select there? People, you know, pi by twelve means fifteen degrees. No, when you draw the cos graph and sine graph, both in the same diagram, right? Cos zero is one. Cos ninety is zero. This is a cos graph. Sine graph when you draw. Sine zero zero. Sine ninety one. Here we have. Right. You know, people, these two graphs intersect at forty five. Pi by twelve means. 15 right then if i mark 15 here you can see the angle 15 degrees the sine value is given by this height cos value is given by this whole height you can see the cos pi by 12 right this one bigger than the sine pi by 12. Then this difference should again be positive. Understood? The difference should be positive. Am I correct? Therefore, we can select there also plus sign here. Hmm? Therefore, cos pi by 12 minus sin pi by 12 is equal to 1 over root 2, right? The reason here we can write, because cos pi by 12 greater than sin pi by 12. Therefore, the difference should be positive. That is the reason. Now, deduce the value. Ah, right. People will take this as number one. This answer number two. Then once you subtract two from one, one minus two, one minus two, we get one minus two. Right? What do you get there? cos pi by 12, we can cancel with that cos pi by 12. Sin pi by 12 minus minus sin pi by 12, that sin pi by 12 will be doubled. Hmm? 2 sin pi by 12, right hand side, root 3 by 2 minus 1 over root. Here, people, we can take hmm? common denominator is root 2. Then, this is root 3 minus 1. This 2 we can bring via here. Then, 2 root 2. Then, we get sin pi by 2. Well, yes, this answer. Right? This is how we take that. Okay? Next one, question number six. Applied part.
that is this. Number six, particle P of mass M and particle Q of mass lambda M move with speeds U and V respectively towards each other along the same straight line on a smooth horizontal flow. Hmm? After their impact, the particle P moves with speed V n, the particle Q moves with speed U in opposite directions. Show lambda equals one. Right. Speed equation. Number six. Horizontal plane. This is lambda m. M. P. Q. This way U. This way V. After impact. P. Q. M. Lambda M. V and here this is U. You can apply conservation of linear momentum this way. Hmm? Mu minus lambda Mv equals lambda Mu minus Mv. M, 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 M. You can cancel down. No? Right. This minus V you can take this side, U plus V. This we can take right and take lambda out. This way, this u plus v, you can cancel down with this here. We have 1, 1 equals lambda, lambda equals 1. Hmm? Lambda equals 1. Right. Secondly, we apply Newton's law of restitution. We apply Newton's law of restitution this direction. It says what? Minus E times relative velocity before impact. Uh, before impact, stop Q, given V, right. Same V we have to give to this. Then this P will get its velocity U plus V, right toward direction. This V, right. After impact, again we have to stop Q. How? Give you leftward. Same you leftward. Then this will get leftward u plus v. But we apply NLR rightward no? minus u plus v. Minus minus you can cancel down. This and this you can cancel down. E equals one. Hmm? E equals one. Number Next one, 7. Hmm? Balloon carrying a small uniform ball starts from rest from a point on the ground at T0 and moves vertically upwards with the uniform velocity of simple lift, simple lift less than G. At time T, the ball gets gently detached from the balloon and moves under gravity. Sketch the velocity time graph for the upward motion of the ball. From t equals 0 until the ball reaches its maximum height. Okay. The balloon moves like this, people. Hmm? Initially, the acceleration f. There's a ball. Hmm? Here, suppose the ball. Right. Once this is moving this way with the acceleration simple lift, right? At time capital T, the ball gets uh, gently detached. That means at time T, balloon has risen a certain height and it has certain velocity. Hmm? Now when it detaches by the Balloon, it has the velocity v. With that velocity v, it moves under gravity. How? With the retardation g. Reducing the velocity. One location, its velocity becomes zero. That moment, it is at the maximum height. Hmm? So what is the vt graph? Right? 
Now, until the time capital T, particle moves with the balloon with a solution simple F. Right? Is the time capital T. Let this angle be alpha. Tan alpha is the acceleration of what? Of the balloon and meantime the ball was with the balloon no? of the ball. Right, so this time t. Suppose this velocity, that moment is v. Right. Right. After separating from the balloon, well, the ball moves still upwards until its velocity becomes zero. That is with retardation g. Ah, where is the decrease value? Suppose this theta, tan theta is equal to g. Let us ask in there. Sketch the velocity time graph for the upward motion of the ball from t equals 0 until the ball reaches its maximum height. Find the maximum height reached by the ball in terms of t f and g r. Maximum height mean people this area O A B. O A B area gives us the maximum height. Then we can write, I'll take this and see by O A C triangle tan alpha this height B divided by T. If our tan alpha is F no F equals V over T. V equals F T. This way, right? Fine. Next one. Let this time be simple T by A B C triangle tan theta V over T. With subject t, we over bring tan theta here. G. We know this v, v is ft, t equals ft by g. Now we need to find the maximum height reached by the particle that is given by OAB area. Now we will find OAB area. OAB area half is a triangle, no? base t plus t into perpendicular height v right of t given simple t f t by g v f t right now simplify this this t you can take out then that will be t squared. Now here we have one. Take the common derivative as g, g plus f divided by g. Then we get g plus f into f2 squared divided by 2g. Number 8 next. Should we expression question? In the diagram P A B C D is a light inexpensive spring attached to a particle of a simple limb placed on a fixed uh, smooth plane inclined at 30 degrees to horizontal. The spring passes over a fixed smooth 
the small pulley. Okay. Right. Can read diagram now? Yeah. I just this two. Asking uh, whether the magnitude of the acceleration of the particle is twice the magnitude of the acceleration of the movable pulley and write down equation sufficient to determine the tension of the string. Right. The diagrams first will draw like this. A P mass is m weight m g mass two m weight two m g here b c d and here a right here people we get normal reaction r here t tension everywhere tension b equal to light inextensible string and all contact smooth reason is that now we measure the distance from this a to this what pulley suppose x from here to here this y this diagram we draw at time t equals t no and then uh, the acceleration of this pulley is y double dot downward we know acceleration v sorry x double dot downward no uh because we know people in the direction measuring the length the arrow head is pointing to what direction to that direction only we mark the acceleration this is x double dot this is moving we have marked this we know then to that direction only we mark the acceleration y double dot really what happens here people feel what happens this moving this is heavier one no? 2m here m heavier one is this therefore this should move down once this moves down this should go up then you can see here the direction of uh, acceleration should be this direction but we have marked this direction don't worry right but i'll take like this people Really, we move. We know this moves downward. I take its acceleration as capital F. Tilt to the earth. This one really we know moving this direction. I take its acceleration relative to earth as simple F. This x double dot also acceleration. Right then, this x double dot, this capital F, both. represent the acceleration of this relative to earth therefore they must be equal right then we can write 
x double dot should be equal to f. Right. This y double dot tan this f both represent the expression of this p. They must be equal. But there are directions we have mark opposite. So therefore the relation between them going to be y double dot is minus f. This way. Right. Now you can write the at time t equals t the length of the string. What is that? From here to here, y. A small constant here we have. Here to here, x. If that is x people, from here to here, this is also x. This is a constant. This is also a constant. Then, we can write a relation y plus x plus x. Plus this constant, this constant, this constant. All together equal to length of the string. Now, then, for the string at time t. What do you get? y plus x plus x plus all three constants together form new constant that is c. L is the length of the string. Right. Now we differentiate twice. Differentiate in with respect to time t twice. You know people what happens? Y will be y double dot. X, x double dot. Here, also x double dot. C is a constant 0, L is a constant 0. We get y double dot plus 2x double dot is equal to 0. But you know people, y double dot is minus f. Over there you can see. X double dot is capital F equals 0. Take this is right. F equals to F. What is this? Acceleration of this particle is 2 times the acceleration of this pulley. That way we get. Right. Next one. The equation sufficient to determine the tension of the string. Ah, right. Now we apply f equals m a for simple m. This direction. What is the component of the weight? mg sin 30 minus t equals m times acceleration related to earth. Huh? This f also, this x f acceleration is related to earth. Correct, no? Right. So then, this f is people this direction. Right. If you don't substitute f, if you substitute y double root, also correct. I'll substitute this f. We apply this uh, f equals m a for m this direction. m g sin 30 minus t. Hmm? m g sin 30 t minus t equals m times I will put f, it is minus f. Right. If, I, if you substitute in terms of y double dot, y double dot, since its direction is this direction, you have to put there what? Plus y double dot. Right? If you put f, since its direction is this, minus f. This is the first equation. Secondly, we substitute, we apply f equals m a for 2m. Downward direction. This. What are the forces? 2mg down, t, t up. 2m, g minus 2t. 2mg is the weight of this. 2mg minus 2t equals 2m. Acceleration is capital F. OX double root. Both correct. This is number 2. Right. Now, 
people all together how many unknowns are there simple if capital f t huh? three unknowns how many equations here one two here third enough sufficient to find what tension t by this that way we can take the terms right number nine Number nine. In the usual notation, minus five plus two j, equal five plus alpha j, be the position vectors of two points A and B respectively, with respect to a fixed origin. No. Hmm? Right. Right. I raise this one. Huh? Now, i plus minus i plus two j. Why? You need to express j. Oh, here. Minus one plus two j means coordinates minus one plus two. This way, it's a point A. This vector minus i plus two j. Point B two alpha i plus alpha j. Here two alpha. I plus alpha j. This vector. Point is B. Using scalar product, show that A O B pi by two. Right. Hmm. We'll take O A dot O B. Scalar product, vector scalar product, na? Huh? In vectors, the scalar product. Hmm? O A vector minus i plus two j. O B vector two alpha i plus alpha j. You know, if we have this way i j vectors, hmm? How to take the dot product? I Coefficients we multiply, and j coefficients we multiply. Here two alpha, here minus one, minus two alpha. Here two, here alpha, two alpha. Sum is zero. Right. Dot product of two vectors zero mean the two vectors are perpendicular. O A vector. Perpendicular to OB vector. OA vector and OB vector perpendicular means here ninety. AOB ninety. Hmm? Bye bye. Two. Right. Next one. Let C be the point such that OACB is a rectangle. OACB is a rectangle. Then C should be like this, no? O A C B rectangle. Right. If the vector O C lies on the y-axis, right? First, we'll find O C vector. O 
Gaussian vector you can write how? Gaussian vector people equal to O B vector plus B C vector. But this B C vector is equal to O A vector. Then O C vector is this plus this. Two alpha A plus alpha J plus this. That means minus I plus two J. O C vector. Take I out two alpha minus one I. Hmm? J alpha plus We are given this OC vector is on the y axis. People, uh, suppose we have y axis, a certain vector along y axis, suppose that vector here, then when we consider this ending point, its coordinates, definitely x coordinate should be 0. Why? Which is on the y axis, no? x coordinate should be 0. A y coordinate, uh, it can have certain value, suppose y. If I write this vector OC, how to write? x coordinate times i, y coordinate times j. That is how we write, no? You can see, since x coordinate is 0 of the point C, since it is on the y axis, i coefficient going to be 0. Like that, when this OC vector also if it is on the y axis, the i coefficient this should be 0. Now this says 2 alpha minus 1 should be 0, alpha is half. This is how we take alpha. Right. Question number 10. A uniform road AB of length 2A and weight capital W suspended from fixed point O by two light injection split strings OA and OB is an equilibrium as shown in the figure. G is the midpoint of AB. Hmm? It is given that AOB pi by 2, OAB angle alpha. Show that AOG alpha and find the tensions in the strings. Right. We'll take this way. We are given nine to this. A. This is all. A B. G is the midpoint. Then the center of gravity of the uniform rod people midpoint should be here. Where W X to the point this. This is ninety. This angle is alpha. G is the midpoint, no? In AG, GB equal. People now, since here 90, you know, we have a certain geometry, or else, when we consider this a circle, 
take the diameter of a circle the two ends of this diameter of the circle when we join to any point on the circumference the angle is 90 you know this this two are equal also when you join this point to this point it's also radius of the same circle this three are equal so like that people taking this g as the center and taking this gb as the radius when we draw a circle that circle passes through the point this because here we have 90 understood hmm? then we can say this length should also be a radius this is radius therefore this three are, are equal this radius this is radius this is also radius then when these two sides are equal mean people this angle and this angle must also be equal and this should be alpha for the first one given aog to show aog aog alpha ah. how try then people here all right on like this hmm all right on like this right on when a circle is drawn with g as center and gb as radius the circle passes through the point o the circle passes through the point o therefore go becomes a radius radius therefore ag equals go hence aob angle equals alpha right okay no right now i'll mark the tension here this tension t1 is also t1 i'll take this side tension t2 this is t2 right. here this is 90 minus alpha right now you know people here this is alpha this is alpha therefore this is 2 alpha okay 2 alpha i draw through the point g a line parallel to this ao it should be like this correct no right i drew this red line to parallel this t1 or this ao therefore if this is alpha this also alpha but this whole angle this whole angle alpha plus alpha to alpha whole angle to alpha if here we have alpha this also alpha now what is asking people to find the t1 t2 what we do for the equilibrium of the rod we can resolve the forces alone ao you know when certain object is in equilibrium along any direction you know along any direction na? not always horizontal line but vertical 
alone any two perpendicular directions the algebraic sum of the components of the forces should be zero right now we use that are we resolve resolving forces along this direction ao what is force there we have t1 only why this t2 perpendicular to this ao by t2 one get any component this t1 and t2 only acting on the rod t2 is perpendicular to the direction of t1 so therefore once we resolve the forces this direction t2 one come because it is perpendicular to this t1 then t1 is equal to by this w we get people this direction w cos alpha okay now we can resolve along bo along bo right resolve along bo then we can find t Right now, people, <coughs> how do you get there? When you draw a line parallel to this, you see. Right now, then this is 90 minus alpha. No, therefore, this is 90 minus alpha. people this whole angle is what this whole angle 180 minus j2 alpha no this is 180 minus 2 alpha what angle this angle but this is 90 minus alpha then what is this right subtract from this 180 minus 2 alpha that means this whole thing no from that subtract 90 minus alpha minus 90 minus alpha what do you get there 180 minus 90 90 minus 2 alpha minus minus alpha minus alpha then this is 90 minus alpha Now we resolve the forces along BO. Hmm? That direction we have T two, but along that direction T one one give. Hmm? By this W what do you get? W cos ninety minus alpha. W sine alpha. Hmm? T two. W sine alpha. Right, you know, people. We have learned in complement forces lesson. When an object is in equilibrium, along any two perpendicular directions, along any two perpendicular directions, along any two perpendicular directions, algebraic sum of the component should be equal to zero. Okay. At right, this way, we can solve that.